really looking forward to today's segment. I get to go fish with an old college buddy of mine, Justin Cushaw. He lives up in central Michigan area. Uh, the time frame's uh, early June, right after opening day, and typically post-spawn for this time of year. Uh, the lake we're fishing uh, traditionally does very well on soft plastics, so we made and sculpted a bunch of soft plastics to try. Some are softer, a little bit different design, hopefully a little different action than what the fish have seen, because this lake sees a lot of pressure. Let me show you a little bit about what we did, uh, how we made the, the sculptures, uh, how we made the molds and cast them before we go out and fish. We're going to use Sculpey 3 to sculpt our lures. When the Sculpey 3 first comes out of the package, it's pretty stiff. So you'll want to knead it in your hands and work it. The longer you work it, the softer and more easy and pliable it'll become. Then it'll be much easier to sculpt your lures. We start by rolling the Sculpey out into strips, or rolls, then start creating the baits from there. These are very simple designs and anybody can do it. You don't need fancy tools to do this, only a little creativity and an idea of what you want to create. To harden the Sculpey, bake it at 275 for approximately 15 minutes. Once it comes out of the oven, it will be fairly hard. It still may be a little bit pliable, but you're ready to set it down, glue it to your mold base, and make a mold box. Here we're gluing the three pieces down separately so we can make separate mold boxes that are nice and tight to the part so we don't waste our silicone. Using the corrugated strips, we're making custom mold boxes that fit really tightly around the part. This will preserve the silicone so we don't waste any. Once we have the mold boxes tacked down with super glue, we need to come back and seal it. Here we're using hot melt. Hot melt seals the mold boxes extremely well and does not allow the silicone to leak out. Mix up the high strength too according to the instructions. Mix it thoroughly and pour it over the baits. This typically takes overnight to cure and in the next morning you'll have perfect silicone rubber molds of your sculpted baits. One of the big benefits of silicone is that it's flexible. So we're able to simply cut slits where we have the ribbon tails, where we have the undercuts, to relieve that undercut and allow the masters and the lures to come out of the mold. Wherever the silicone has flowed to lock the piece in, simply make a small slit in the mold to allow the part to come out. The soft plastic being that it's flexible will come out much easier than the Sculpey does. Now we're ready to mix up our Alumisol and pour it into our molds. Now's the time you can add salt, dye, flake, glitter, pearl powder, or anything else you want to add to your soft plastic.
as soon as the aluminum salt cools down, the baits are ready to come out of the mold. Here you can see we've mixed up a few different versions of Alumasol and we're ready to go try them out on the water. Hey Justin. Hey Mike, how's it going? Good, good to see you man. Looks like you got like a perfect day to yeah. hit your body of water with you man. This is awesome, I love it. I'm love excited. It. Yeah, it's a great lake. It sees a lot of pressure but uh, it's a good soft plastics lake so hopefully the uh, lures you've made up will do us some good. Sounds good, let's go try it. Alright, let's do it. All right. All right, so the first lure that Mike molded up, we put it on an eighth ounce weighted hook, Texas rig style, and we're hoping that the ribbon tail gives it a little more action than what these fish are used to seeing. The second, the second lure, we're just going to put it on a weighted shaky head, and the third lure, we're just going to do it as a jigging pig. Well, five casts in, it's not exactly what we're looking for, but it's a good start. There's a better fish right there. That's a nice one. We poured some of these lures and we made some softer than some harder to see kind of what the action would be. Um, this one uh, that we just poured that I have on right now, I have on a weightless Texas rig. And I think it's a little too stiff because the ribbon's just not moving. So what we did, I actually brought some scissors out here. And what I want to do is I want to make what we consider a lot of onboard modifications, especially when you're prototyping or creating a lure for the first time. So I brought some scissors and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this kind of ribbon tail that we did, even though it's got some vertical, and I'm just going to cut slits. So I'm going to cut maybe three or four legs up the up the uh, up the side of it. This way, we'll have more like almost like tentacles, similar to a tube bait. There he is. Definitely catching some fish on these uh, hand poured plastics. They're, looks like the fish are post spawn. They're definitely on a, a bluegill pattern. I think the bluegill are finally up here bedding. And they're really coming up here and attacking this little uh, ribbon tail swim bait that we made. So, uh, next thing I think I would do if I came out here again is I would actually try to catch one of these little bluegills make a little mold of them, see if we could actually catch one on uh, these little three and four inch uh, panfish that they're, that they're eating now. Maybe a little better one here too on the ribbon worm. Uh, not too shabby, a little over a pound maybe. Nice little ribbon worm. All in all, I think we're doing pretty good today on uh, the, the lures that we made. I think they're uh, showing some promise. A couple things we might do different. You can see this one again, we split the tail a little bit, give it a little bit more action. Uh, but those are the on-water modifications that you can make. So, uh, not bad for the ribbon worm. The uh, swim bait kind of seemed to be outperforming the crayfish one right now, but it looks like they're kind of chasing shad, so that's probably to be expected.